How's it going everyone? This is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and to the end of the initial Ryzen trilogy. 27th of July marks the release date of Ryzen 3, AMD's newest processors targeted towards the sub $130 range. Just how these new CPUs perform, we're going to find out today. I'm going to jump straight to conclusions here since one thing's been painfully obvious for me for quite some time now. There is no place for dual cores, even hyper-threaded ones, in 2017 and it hasn't been for a few years now. Even quad cores are starting to struggle in gaming and 4-core four 4-thread four CPUs are definitely phased out for serious productivity tasks. While something like the Pentium G4560 still a 2-core 4-thread CPU only makes sense when you consider the extremely low price of 60 ish dollars, something like the i3 KB Lake lineup, which starts at around double that $120, starts making less and less sense in today's common heavy workloads. Ryzen 3 is very important. It eradicates this obsolete for some time now segment, making a straight up 4 core unlocked CPU the minimum anyone should ever use, anyone willing to spend even as low as $100 on a processor. Wondershare's Video Converter Ultimate is a very fast video converter. Take your favorite holiday clips, apply effects and even edit them in a timeline before choosing from a wide list of video formats that will be encoded using fast GPU acceleration. Download videos from different websites, create DVDs and enjoy extras like VR video encode, a GIF maker or another handy screen recorder tool. Check out more by visiting the link in the description. Today we've got two new 65W SKUs, the Ryzen 3 1300X sporting a 3.5GHz base clock and a 3.7GHz boost clock and the Ryzen 3 1200, undoubtedly the more interesting of the two, clocking in at 3.1GHz with a 3.4GHz boost. Of course, both are unlocked, come with 8 megs of L3 cache and are packaged with a Wraith Stealth cooler. The 1200 is, to me, clearly the way to go if you're willing to overclock. And I only say this since the rather low stock clock of 3.1GHz is not great but can easily be remedied on these unlocked CPUs. As a matter of fact, my particular 1200 was a better overclocker than the 1300X. It got me to 4GHz at 1.38V while the 1300X only got me to 3.95GHz at 1.392V. Neither of the two, however, could boot above 2933MHz RAM speed. It's extremely commendable that AMD has one unified silicon die design all the way down from Ryzen 7 to finally these two new parts. In order to obtain these CPUs, AMD just needs to disable SMT and two cores from both CCXs. This being said, it stands to reason that the data fabric is still very important to these new processors since we have a 2 plus 2 core design. I really doubt the appeal a regular 4 core 4 thread CPU has for productivity tasks when you have the absolute best option on the market right now, for around $80 more than the 1300X, the Ryzen 5 1600 coming in with 6 cores and 12 threads to chew through your programs and power smooth gaming at the same time. I did however go ahead and tested these two CPUs, both stock and overclocked, in Cinebench and Handbrake, WinRAR and finally Passmark. I think this covers nicely the 99th percentile usage for these CPUs on the productivity side of things. I mentioned overclocking earlier and I wanna discuss a bit here what's changed in my overclocking routine as opposed to Ryzen 5 and 7, the cooler I use specifically. Usually I'd use a cooling solution that's anywhere between 50 to 90 plus dollars. But since this amount would represent a hefty chunk of the CPU costs, it's more realistic to use the boxed coolers in such cases. This is good and true to life and this leads us nicely into temperatures and power draw. Both of these CPUs are very cold when stock, but the biggest surprise and definitely one thing bringing additional added value to the AM4 Ryzen 3 platform is the boxed cooler. I was able to max both these CPUs with the Wraith Stealth cooler and as you can see temperatures, while not excellent, are 100% ok for daily use. As for power draw, the stock 1200 is extremely frugal like the i3s, but the 1300X sees around 20 watts or so more entirely due to higher frequency. Obviously overclocking the 1200 to 4GHz puts it in last place, but hey, it would still be above all of these locked Intel CPUs even if they needed even 100 watts more, if you know what I mean. 
<coughs> unlocked. RAM. I have some very interesting videos on Ryzen and RAM, but one I keep coming back to is the truth about Ryzen and fast RAM one. In there I talk about the fallacy of testing locked and budget current Intel processors with above 2400 MHz RAM. A task which requires more expensive motherboards with Z chipsets, leading to some extremely dubious spar choices that buyers have to make on these locked, less costly CPUs. Well, I'm not free of that fallacy since I know there's also truth and testing on equal footing for all participants, so you will still see me using 3000 MHz on the Intel parts, with the exception of the G4560 where I refuse to go above 2400 MHz on a $65 processor. But anyway, it's time for the game benchmarks. I tested the 1080p high settings and 6 CPU intensive titles using an RX 480 clock at 1350 MHz core clock and 8500 MHz effective VRAM clock. It's a pity to leave performance on the table, especially with such a great boxed cooler, so for frame times I'm pairing the 1200 at 4GHz with the i3-7100. I want to point out that I did some GTX 1070 testing off screen and in that particular case the Ryzen 3 CPUs usually have a bigger lead on the i3s, but then again the 1070 costs around 4 times as much as the CPUs and this is the reason why I didn't use it in these tests. The Ryzen 5 1500X is a better option than all these tested CPUs for a little extra money compared to the 1300X. And most certainly even the 1400 is going to be a better option. Generally though, the 1300X provides performance on par with the KB Lake i3s, with the big difference that it's also overclockable. I found at least two titles where the i3 struggles to offer a smooth game feel. Watch Dogs 2 where it simply doesn't cut it and we get really bothersome stutter, clearly visible in the frame times. The other title where we see the same situation repeating itself is Witcher 3, where the micro and macro stutters are even more pronounced. It's in these cases where it's obvious that dual cores are not enough and will very soon become a serious limiting factor in your system's performance. That being said, none of these frame time graphs look particularly good, pointing to the fact that even entry level quad cores, non HT or SMT enabled that is, are only a momentary option providing no real headroom for the future. I see this in the CPU usage statistics for them, all these games kept the CPUs constantly above 90% usage and this is why gaming temperatures are so extremely close to synthetic stress testing ones. It is however clear that Ryzen 3 seeks, like all other Ryzen CPUs that have come before it, to bring something fresh to the market, create competition and for the case of Ryzen 3, enable budget quad core builds that were not exactly possible prior to its release. And this is why Ryzen 3 is important and this is also why I think that AMD needs to find an answer to Intel's Pentium G4560, a CPU that I thoroughly appreciate at its price point. If AMD finds a way to offer a true 4 core part for around the same price level, they will have successfully covered all segments of the market this year, seeing as Threadripper is again poised to bring the same excellent value in a few weeks in its respective price segment. Alright, let me know what else you'd like to see tested on Ryzen 3 in the comments down below. While you're at it, leave me your questions and suggestions. Also check out my Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description down below. And thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. See you next time everybody, bye bye.